The Coach's Smoke Barbecue Baylor pregame show on Sikkim 365 Radio. Ah, come back with a lane, and there goes Abram Smith to the house. Touchdown, Baylor Bears. The Baylor pregame show is also presented by the Nietzsche Group. Young's going to have to hurry to get it underway. He does. Back to throw. Looking, looking, throwing for the end zone, and it is. It enters it incomplete in the end zone, but it doesn't matter. The game is over. The ball is down in the end zone, and Vader has defeated Brigham Young University by a score of 40 to 36 in a thrilling and exciting football game. Now here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Oh man, it's a glorious day in Central Texas, uh, Waco, Texas, where. Top 20 Brigham Young is in town, and you can see their fans everywhere. Homecoming weekend for Baylor, and they're all over the place. Baylor and Brigham Young, 2.30 today, and we'll take you up until 2 o'clock and hear from Ty Detmer, Grant Taft, uh, Kalani Sataki, the head coach at Brigham Young, and Baylor's head coach in Dave Aranda. Early games, it is in Austin, Oklahoma State, down 17-10. to 10. They have the ball 3rd and 9 at their own, I think, 30 or 40-yard line. A pick six of Casey Thompson has made that game a little bit closer than it was. It was 17-3. to Texas had intercepted the, the bad Spencer Sanders, but then the pick six turned that thing back around pretty quickly. A&M, after the emotional win last week against Alabama, jumped all over Missouri up 28-7. to So those are just a couple of games off the top early on in college football. Paul Catalina to my left, Craig Smoke to my right. None of us got the memo to wear gray and black today, but we did. And uh, we're ready to go for Brigham Young and Baylor. I can't wait for this game. Huh? This is, is this the best non-conference game Baylor has hosted in maybe a couple of decades? I can't even think of one that was this good. And I've been here for 16, going on 17 years now. So I can't, I cannot even, I mean, I'm thinking like Duke was, Duke, people were excited because of Duke being here. I mean, and Wake Forest were the two maybe best ones before then. Well, Craig, I know you haven't seen a non-conference game other than a bowl game like this. Yeah, no, I mean, it, pretty simple. Yeah, it is. Uh, and that's, you know, going back to 2013, it's not even a question uh, or one I really need to think about. They haven't hosted anybody really of note. So, yeah, Duke was Duke only because they were a name that wasn't a directional school or had state afterwards. I mean, it was the first time they played somebody that people actually recognized as, oh, yeah, they actually do well in other sports. Yep. And uh, it's not Stephen F. Austin or – you know, whoever else. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's clearly the biggest non-con game they've hosted uh, at least in the last 10 years or so, I would think. Armstrong, can you pick up my Twitter feed and the last tweet that I put up? So, we remember Taggart Barron was on our show yesterday. I went over to the Brazos East parking area, which is off the Brazos River, and there are what appear to be thousands of Brigham Young fans in town, which is great. We've heard about how well they travel and they're proving that again today. They have a setup over at the Brazos East Parking, and they're everywhere. The fans of Brigham Young, I stopped, I called Taggart, he sent me a picture. They're loading up an, uh, a, like an, an 18 wheeler, but a box truck with canned goods. They're having a food drive as well for local charities. And then on top of that, so I called him, I said, hey, I'm about to come by. They're almost like a pit stop. I want to say hi to you because he's a huge fan of our show we love the fact that all across america we have people who listen and watch us on 365 sports and sikkim 365 radio so i went by there and i got a chance to meet him said hi to him and then on uh, before he got to where i was parked and i was just right there on the street basically i took a picture of a, a kind of a, an overview of everybody the fire ants and there was a bus a large one of those big black almost like limo type buses 
that were people coming out in droves, Brigham Young and their blue, today in Waco. I'm not sure, Armstrong, if you have a chance to pick that up I don't, yet or not. You don't have the, the right to do it? I don't see anything on your... Okay, maybe it hasn't plan. loaded up yet. Maybe it's just because my Twitter feed's a little bit stuck in neutral. But I'll see if I can get that up and we'll send it to you. Uh, and we'll put that up. They're everywhere. Brigham Young fans are everywhere. All right, uh, also, Florida, Paul. And LSU, in a game we had Mike Scarborough on from Tiger Bait, he said, when we asked the question, if LSU beats Florida, could that save Coach O? And what did he say? Nope. But doesn't matter to the Tigers right now because uh, they have got Coach O's back and Max Johnson is uh, playing pretty well. The defense has picked off Emory Jones twice. In fact, on back-to-back -back picks, the Florida's two-quarterback system not working today. Uh, of course, Richardson was out for, for a little bit of time with a hamstring injury. But Emory Jones continues to be an adventure. And Florida, you know, outside of that game against Alabama, on offense has looked a little bit wonky. And you don't lose it, Kyle Trask, who's who was a really quality starter and is now in the NFL. And you don't lose a Kadarius Tony and just bounce back when you're when you are where Florida is. Florida's not where Alabama is. Florida's on that next tier. They haven't found people to take their place yet, really. And uh, we saw that against Kentucky. They're they're not that strong and uh, on offense and LSU right now about to maybe about to score again they're doing what they want yeah they're they're already back into florida territory how about this one Ar auburn and arkansas 14 to 10 auburn uh that game may have just gone to halftime indiana leads michigan state late in the first half nine seven that would be of course a a a, a, a huge run into a brick wall for michigan state and there's one other game how about this one in a battle of two future big 12 teams cincinnati 35 ucf nothing and that game's not even a halftime as the Bearcats are rolling past UCF 35 to nothing with still a couple of minutes left in the first half. Yeah, well, uh, been a very rocky year for Gus Malzahn and company. Uh, you know, it was a big splash higher uh, for them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, credit to Cincinnati. They're clearly a, a much better team, and they're clearly the class of the AAC at this point. Baylor and Brigham Young today, just after 2.30 uh, today on at McLean Stadium in the first meeting since 1984 and just the third meeting overall. Baylor won the first one. That shootout with Steve Young. You heard the highlight, 40-36. And then Brigham Young, the year they won the national title in 1984, smoked Baylor up in Provo as well. Uh, when we uh, The text line's open, 254-339-1122. We're going to hear from, again, Kalani Sataki, the head coach of Brigham Young, Dave Aranda, Ty Detmer, and Grant Tapp. Uh, the text line's available. We'd love to hear from you. So we're inside the studio, 101 Elm Avenue, and every once a year we hear from Caroline Lindstrom. Once a year, correct? Yes. She's in town. Yes. She goes, how come you guys aren't at the tailgate? She checks in with us once a year, and we told her where we are. We're not sure if she's coming by or not. We know that Blake Blackmar is tailgating today as well. All right, Craig, tell me about Brigham Young's offense and Baylor's speed on defense. They have some receivers. We've heard about that. Quarterback position has been kind of in flux. They have Algier, the running back, who's pretty good. Your thoughts about Baylor and against the Brigham Young offense? Well, I mean, you just ran down their positions. I mean, Jaron Hall's the guy we're going to see today. Uh, you know, maybe we see a little bit of Baylor Romney. I'm not sure if he's cleared or not. Uh, you know, if he is or isn't, uh, Jaron Hall's still going to be the guy. But the reason why it matters if Baylor Romney is cleared or not is, is that would be the guy next up if Hall's not effective or if – Hall is, you know, having any lasting effects from uh, the injury, uh, although that did seem to still be a little bit of an issue for him last week. I mean, he, he probably should be healthy, I would think, at this point. But just in case, I mean, that would be their break glass guy, but I don't even know if they could break glass and get him. So it's going to be Jaron Hall. Um, Algiers, their star running back, he's very good, although he's – uh, not r rushing for nearly as many yards per carry as he did. He's rushing for about half the yards per carry as he did last year. Uh, but then last year he was in the Jeff Grimes offense and he had a, you know, top pick at quarterback in Zach Wilson. He had a top wide receiver and Dax Milne and uh, they had a lot of good weapons and they had a really good offensive line with guys like Brady Christensen. And so mm -hmm. uh, he's still a good running back, but he's not running the same you know, way that he was last year. So that's gone down a little bit, but he's still somebody they obviously have to worry about. And they've got a couple of good receivers, uh, you know, that, that can be effective. I think that's where for Baylor it's going to come down to is how do the cornerbacks and safeties, you know, uh, 
hold off the, the BYU passing attack or hold back the BYU passing attack and, uh, you know, force them into, into you know, having to, to do some things maybe they're not comfortable doing or, or just force them into situations where they, they are having to do one thing versus the other. Uh, but, yeah, if they're, if they're connected on the pass, I mean, that's going to be interesting to see early because that's not something really – too many teams have done against Baylor where they've had success. They typically just ran on them and then hit a little pass here and there, but nobody's just flat out like thrown on them uh, consistently or deep uh, for that matter. So, you know, it's, it's a secondary that's very, uh, you know, experienced. And so I can understand not wanting to test them, but I would expect BYU to test them a little bit today to open up Algier and, and maybe even Hall running the ball a bit as well. That would not be a surprise. He is a, a mobile quarterback. So, yeah, I mean, they, they've got a lot of options, but I like the Baylor defense uh, against the run, but the pass is the big question mark. And, you know, if they're connecting with the pass, does that open everything else up for them? And then we see Algier running wild or Hall running wild. I mean, that'll be the question. So the Baylor secondary for me today is is the big question mark. Raymond from Waco, can you tell us what channel the game is on? Yes, the network is ESPN. Robert Griffin III is part of that broadcast from Stephen Vaughn. This is the biggest non-conference game since 2011 or even 2008 when TCU was technically a non-conference game. Remember the game at Floyd Casey? Mm -hmm. The year before in 2010, TCU ran the table, beat Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl, Andy Dalton, and they killed Baylor up in Fort Worth. And the next, they played the opening game, I think, or whatever it was the next year, whatever game, and Baylor got them. And that was on their way to eventually help them get to a bowl game that year uh, at, at seven. No, it helped them, uh, help Robert, Robert Griffin. That was part of that run. They were 10-3 and three in that game as well. Oklahoma State, Kicked a field goal, 17-13. Texas leads that game at halftime. And if I'm Texas, I'm like, man, we we haven't dominated, but we've been 17-3 to and inside their red zone, and we're down. We're only up four. You got to wonder about that. Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma State, I, I, you know, they're, they're unbeaten. They're number 12, uh, and they just find a way, you know, today to keep it close because they're not playing very well at all. I mean, the, the pick six was a, a lifesaver for them. Uh, and without that, it's probably twenty-three to three or yeah. twenty to three, and they're probably done um, because I don't think their offense is the type of offense to climb out of a three-touchdown hole. Uh, even though Texas defense isn't, you know, impossible to get around, as we saw last week against Oklahoma. But yeah, I mean that they've got to be very happy, Mike Gundy and company, to only be down four. Uh, they have no business being down four, quite frankly. So that's that's a win for them. And yeah, if you're Texas, you're still leading the game. But at the same time, you also probably realize, like, we can be up by, like, three touchdowns right now. So one of two things happens in the second half. Either Oklahoma State, just being able to keep it close, is able to flip that and get a big road win and stay unbeaten and turn some heads. Or, you know, UT does kind of what they did in the first half, except cleaner, and they, they pull away in this game. But, yeah, very close game at halftime, and surprisingly so. This is what Oklahoma State does, though, guys. I mean, this is this is how they went. Look, the game against Baylor wasn't, if you look at it over what they were, the opportunities they had wasn't all that clean. You know, they don't, they don't really win clean. They win dirty. Boise State, they had really no business beating Boise State the way they played in that game, but they just hang around and hang around and hang around and they're kind of like that mosquito that you can hear in your ear, and you can't every time you try yeah, to no, swat yeah. it, it gets away. <laughs> and yep. and then eventually, you know, you turn around and they're they're ahead, and you're like, how did this happen? You know, Texas, like Craig said, Texas should be up twenty four to three or something in this game right now, but they're not seventeen thirteen at halftime in that game, uh, and and right now that one of course is in Austin. That would be a critical win for Oklahoma State. That means they would have wins against Baylor. They'd have wins against Kansas State. They'd have a win if, in fact, they come back. They could still lose this game 34-13 uh, to Oklahoma State. That would be, uh, But that would be a nice little start to what they have going on and beating a couple of teams that are in the middle of it, two or three maybe, with K-State, Baylor, and if they can come back and beat Texas. Uh, and, and it'd be a heck of a win for Texas to bounce back after uh, the disappointment of what happened against Oklahoma at the Cotton Bowl. Later on today, you have Texas Tech at 3 o'clock at Kansas you have Ooh. Iowa State at K-State. That's intriguing at 630. And that's on ESPN2. And tonight, TCU at Oklahoma. That game is on ABC. That's on the Big Dog Network. And uh, Oklahoma coming off the win. And we'll see Caleb Williams, Oklahoma, and uh, whatever might be the truth about Zach Evans and or Max Duggan or others with TCU, whether they play or not. Yeah, uh, should be a good game. Um uh, interested to see Caleb Williams and uh, how he does starting out of the gates and Gary Patterson having time to 
prepare for him. Um, I'm sure Gary Patterson probably looked at a little bit of Rattler film, but uh, mostly Caleb Williams film. And uh, yeah, should be a good game. I you know I don't know how good TCU really is. They have the pieces to be what seems like pretty good. Their defense isn't as great as it has been uh, typically, uh, but they still have you know a lot of playmakers over there. They've got uh, you know good weapons on offense. Obviously, Zach Evans leads the way, but uh, they you know Duggan. Duggan's good, but he, he kind of feels like Spencer Sanders to me, uh, kind of like Brock Purdy to me, where we've kind of seen their best and their worst, and we see them all mixed together, and we never see, like, the best for, like, three or four weeks. Yep. We see it, like, off and on, like a light switch. He's that same guy to me. There's a bunch of those guys in the Big 12, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, if he goes out and throws and has a big game, because he's going to have to throw to win the game, I would, I would think. Uh, Zach Evans will get his, I'm sure, and, and Kendry Miller will probably get some too. But, I mean, I like Oklahoma – uh, being able to, if you want to run versus run, okay, I, I like their chances in that. But, uh, you know, if, if Duggan can sling it around, that, that'll that make it interesting. And, and he hasn't quite shown that he's capable of doing that and, and going out and just winning games with his arm consistently. So, yeah, should be a good matchup. Max Duggan, Brock Purdy, and, you know, those guys are kind of like guys you'd want to have if you're going to play a close game because you know they're gritty and gutty. You, you wouldn't mind having them. But, again, they leave you wanting. I mean, you, you would you'd be like, well, uh, you here, know. Yeah, here's an example, Paul. Great point. And, and, and this is Spencer Sanders that makes you want to pull your hair out if you're an Oklahoma State fan. He has not looked great. He's had a couple of throws. He had a guy deep early, and I, I'm not sure if, it, if pass was just overthrown. He did have a touchdown drop that he threw a perfect back shoulder or over the shoulder catch in the end zone. They had to settle for a field goal. But then late when they were down 17 to 10, they got the ball back. He brought them right down the field to put them in position with some throws across the middle and made, you know, bought some time and they kicked the field goal. And it's kind of like he kind of has a little bit of that Charlie Brewer in him as well. And I'm not saying he's the same player, but like when things all are like frenetic and crazy and you just got to go, that's when he seems to be better. Mm -hmm. And even some cases with Duggan, who's a better runner. Uh, uh, with no, no mm, question about it. Duggan yeah. a better runner than Spencer Sanders? Uh, no, than Charlie. Oh, okay. you know, like, early Charlie Brewer could find, you know, he could pick up some yards, but no, Duggan's a heck of a running back. Florida right. just scored on a Hail Mary at the end of the half, which is going to get reviewed. It's pretty close, but I, I think they got it. Okay. Well, uh, that's big because uh, otherwise it's blowout territory, so they'll at least be within a score. Um, that's a touchdown. Looks like uh, it. Yeah. That looks like a touchdown to yeah. me. Yeah, that's it looks clear like foot in between the – that's a lot of yellow between his foot and the out-of-bounds line there. That's pretty clearly a touchdown as long as he had his hands on it. So, yeah, Florida scores on a Hail Mary, and uh, they needed that desperately. Yeah, he's got desperately. it. Desperately. Yeah, he's got it. That's a, a touchdown with Florida, 21-12 extra points still to come in that game. All right, we have heard from both head coaches this week on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sport. We're going to hear – from Kalani Sataki momentarily. Some of the chat from Kyle, Kelsey. Boomer Sooner, let's go. Also, great show, guys. Keep up the good work. Patrick Thank Bourne opened the gates with Sikkim Bears and Samuel, Austin Sikkim Baby. Gary Lewis, 21 Oklahoma State, the best in the Big 12. Uh, I've heard that Evans and Doug, uh, Duggan are out for TCU. I don't know <laughs> to what to be. And oh, Hayden Bumpus. A lot of navy and white around the campus today. There's no question about it. I, I'm going to try to get that video to Armstrong to put up on the show if I can earlier today. All right? Here is from Gary. Watch for Brigham Young to run at least one trick play today, like a double pass or something of that nature. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing that benefits Baylor is uh, there's – and it also benefits BYU, though, too, is uh, just the familiarity. That's the, the biggest storyline to me in this game is, you know – well, for one, what Baylor could have in store if they win this game. Same thing for BYU. Baylor in particular be 6-1 and one, heading into a bye week and feeling pretty good about life. Uh, and then coming back and having two weeks to prepare for Texas and at home again. So, I mean, to say that a win today would be huge would, would be uh, putting it mildly. And I know it would be big for BYU as well after suffering that loss last week. But, yeah, you know, the trick plays and things like that, I mean – Curious to see what wrinkles these coaching staffs do throw at each other because they know each other's wrinkles pretty well uh, after having worked together for so many years and, and threw off, you know, off and on through their different coaching circles. As Aranda outlined earlier this week, I mean, he's known some of these guys for, you know, 30 years at this point, 30, 35 years, 20, 25 years in, in some cases. So, yeah, uh, trick passes would not surprise me. You're on the road and, 
you know, you, you try to spark something or, you know, get them off their, uh, get them on their toes or what, what have you, get them off balance. And yeah, trick play would, wouldn't be surprising at all. Blake Blackmar's tailgating over in the Brazos uh, parking lot at Sikkim 365 has their parking lot as well. And he's taunting us with even a picture of his smoker in the background uh, with Mr. Meta. He just put it up on Twitter. I, I guess, guys, uh, you didn't want to uh, want the smoke, especially Blake Blackmar's smoke. Spot 27 balls in your court. <laughs> God, I thought Blake loved us enough to deliver that right in front of us. From Howard Steele, when he spoke at Chapel, there was not an empty seat. He was talking about Grant Taft uh, during the times whenever he spoke at Baylor and, and also at Chapel from Howard Steele. When we come back, Kalani Sataki, head coach at Brigham Young, coming off the loss to Boise State. Great respect. In fact, in times they spent time, Dave Aranda and Coach Sataki, when Gary Anderson was at Wisconsin and elsewhere. And this is Sikkim 365 Radio. Masters of Barbecue, kings of crazy good food and the perfect sanctuary for sports, beer, and barbecue. It's Coach's Triple X Smoke on Austin Avenue in downtown Waco and also on Highway 84 in McGregor. A menu filled with choices like a great offensive playbook including three meat combos with sides, burgers and sandwiches, wings, loaded giant spuds, and salads. Crazy wings, chicken poppers, big boy fries, and smoking quesadillas, just some of their amazing appetizers. There's Coach Big Old Draft Beer or Orders Zach's Spicy Bloody Mary or Coach's Margaritas and Mimosas while watching your favorite team play. Great pecan smoked barbecue, fun atmosphere with attention to detail, including a catering menu and we'll quote your price to fit your budget. Coach's Triple X Smoke on Austin Avenue in downtown Waco and walking distance to the great places to shop and enjoy and also the original location on Highway 84 in McGregor. Great food, great price, great fun. Eat where the locals eat. The 2021 Ram brand just received first place in the prestigious J.D. Power's initial quality study. The Dodge brand finished second to Ram, and the 2021 Jeep Gladiator is first among all midsize trucks. Quality and Ram Power Days, only at Allen Samuels, 201 West Loop 340. Come by, let's be friends. How did Edward Jones become one of the biggest financial service companies in the world? By not acting that way. Financial strategies, one-on-one -on -one advice, it's a big difference. And that's why Brad Wilson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, makes sense of investing. Experience the difference for yourself. Brad Wilson, 250 Sharon Drive in Woodway, 254-776-4337. Edward Jones, member SIPC. With more than 160,000 alumni worldwide and counting, the Baylor family is growing. And through the university's expanded Baylor alumni program, the family is growing closer. With hundreds of local volunteers planning events in cities and towns around the country, you can gather with fellow Bears no matter where you are. So get connected, get something started, get involved, and make plans to get together with Baylor alumni. Visit us at baylor.edu slash alumni. Stepping into a new pair of boots is great, but stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can also add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. There are more than 150 occupational specialties to help them find the best fit for their future. See all the things your son or daughter can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. Hey, this is Bryce Petty, former starting quarterback and two-time Big 12 champion. And I know firsthand the importance of being in top shape both on and off the field. So listen up, men. If you're feeling beat down day in and day out and looking for that high-performance edge that separates the men from the boys, then look no further than the Petty Clinic Low T in Waco. Petty Clinic is a comprehensive men's health care clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Board-certified Dr. Kent Petty has a special interest in offering the highest quality medical care to men of all ages. Some of the services offered include screening and treatment for low testosterone or thyroid, infertility, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, while offering comprehensive wellness exams and complete men's health lab panels. High performance men, remember, it's not just a petty thing. This is Bryce Petty, encouraging you to reach out and Google search Petty Clinic Low T or go to PettyClinicLowT.com and get your complimentary lab screening today. 
Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Call us on the Bet US Hotline 254 339 1122. We're now joined by Brigham Young head football coach Kalani Sataki on Sikkim 365 Radio. I spoke with Dave Aranda today, and he said a lot of amazing things about you. And that just wasn't like, okay, they're next on our schedule. He told me that at times you guys were in the same, like at Gary Anderson's house, barbecue, watching film. Uh, do you remember, recollect some of those times with Dave Aranda as well? Oh, yeah. I remember many times that I remember making the trip out to Wisconsin to, to do some talk, some football, um, talk, talk, talk with him. And uh, we've spoken many times about philosophy on defense and, uh, you know, just things to do as, as coaches. And uh, I'm just I've known him throughout my whole coaching career. He's he's got great connections to our coaching staff and the, and the coaches on our staff. And, uh, you know, he's just a great young, he's just a great man, first of all, and uh, a great mentor to young men. And, and I've been it's an honor for, for me to come call him my friend and so it's, it's really cool to see what he's doing there in Waco and I'm really excited about this matchup you know because I get to see my buddy but then we get to compete on the field and I, I got some more friends on that staff too and I'm just really, I'm watching watching the film has been really fun to watch the, you know to see them and, and the success that they're having this season. So what is it like week of when you're going to play people that you are close to like Jeff Grimes and Eric Mateos and, and Dave Aranda that are all here in Waco uh, you know your friends until it's it like Friday night? Is there a cutoff day where the friendship's on pause and then it restarts once the game's over on Saturday? No, they're all my. They're, they're always going to be my guys, you know. So like, the, the the thing is, we don't play the game. We 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 coach, and once you get into the game, uh, all the game mechanics take over, and then uh, and then you, you just know that you know afterwards you're going to embrace them and give them a hug, and uh, those guys know I love them, you know. And I'm I'm really thankful for the things that they did here. Uh, speaking about uh, Eric Mateos and, and and Jeff Grimes, and and so they 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 sacrificed and worked so hard for me here, and uh, helped me build this program and I, I'll always be forever grateful to them because of, of their hard work and sacrifice and I became really close to those guys you know I got to see uh, we, we became really really close friends and and, um, and, and brothers and and I, I have nothing but love for those gentlemen they get to be at home and, and close to home and then you know they're, they're Texans they're, they're the guys that are talking about Texas all the time out here in Provo, Utah and it's nice that they get to go back there and, and get to coach in a wonderful uh, university like Baylor and, and, and for a wonderful coach like Dave Miranda, so I'm happy for them. We're just going to have a lot of fun with this game, but let it be settled on the field with the players. Well, Coach, they've been glowing in their praise of uh, their time at your program, and they've been tremendous additions to uh, Waco, Texas so far. When popping on the tape, I mean, you, you recognize the offense, I'm sure, the RVO and Jeff Grimes. Uh, Mateos has been tremendous with what he's done to boost the offensive line. Uh, what do you see on film when watching the Bears? What are some of your first impressions? Highly efficient offense. I mean, I, I'm uh, for a first year, uh, uh, you know, offensive install like that to be clicking so well. And then, and, and uh, listen, you, you're playing against some really good defenses and some great talent. And so, but to have a quarterback that hasn't thrown an interception all year long, and to have uh, a team and an old line as physical as they are, and with the so that's complemented with a, with a great talent in in the skill positions as with the receivers, tight ends, and running backs. I mean, it's a dangerous team. And, and so, uh, you know, looking at, at what they've done all year, uh, I'm sure that um, a lot of the, the, the mishaps along the way were just more self-inflicted than anything. And that's a, a sign of a well-coached team, sign of a great culture that's there that's there with the players. And uh, it's something that's really familiar. We've seen that happen before and seen some familiar plays and uh, the same style. And, and so it's, it's really cool to watch. And, and I know Dave Aranda is a great coach, man. He, he, he's, it's just, it's just a matter of time before that thing becomes a monster and might already be one this year. 
I know you guys are coming off a tough game Saturday uh, against Boise State. This is a game that's so ironic with Baylor. It's the year that realignment occurred. It's the year that it became expansion with Brigham Young being a part of the Big 12 in the future. Uh, and it's a late non-conference game for someone like Baylor in the Big 12. Is it ironic that you're playing them this year, the same year when things changed over the summer? Hey, everything happens for a reason. Uh, we're, we're really excited about our partnership with all the universities in the Big 12. We're excited about being part of that that, that wonderful conference and uh, looking forward to it. And obviously this game is like a, uh, uh, you know, a, probably a, just a, a quicker version and, and something that's more short ter- short term. But looking forward to having many games out there in Waco and, and uh, being around that fan base that, that I know they're really passionate about their team. And so uh, this is something that we're embracing 100%, looking forward to the matchup. The fact that we have uh, a lot of familiar friends on the other side and even on the, on the field is something that we're excited about too. So, um, you know, just looking forward to this game, looking forward to the matchup and, and, and looking forward to the future as well. Knowing that BYU had, had wanted to be back in a conference for, for some time and was you know looking for the right opportunity to make that happen football-wise, from a coach's perspective, I know that decision is made above your head and that it's not something that they're going to loop you in on until final decisions are made. But from your perspective, what was, like, what was that like from BYU's coach's perspective, watching BYU get welcomed in and, and be a part of all this? Well, really excited. I mean, I, I played for the legendary Lavelle Edwards, mm-hmm. and uh, and I remember being a player, and and people always questioning our schedule, um, and 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 the, the the toughness of it, you know. And so we had a little bit of that last year, and um, and so it's just good to be invited to a, a wonderful conference like the Big Twelve with such quality opponents and, and such quality schools and, and fan bases. That's something we're really excited about. And the funny thing is that um, it's it's not to another couple. Of years, but the, the excitement is hard to, to, to hold back here from all the fans and, and even the players. And the, the excitement is something that, that we can really use to help help the momentum of the program. But uh, our focus is completely on playing ball that week, playing mm-hmm. the game of the week. When this announcement came on, we it was the day before the Utah game. I announced it to the team, and the team was just like, "That's great, coach. So let's let's get on to Utah already." And mm-hmm. and um, you know, these guys are really excited about this matchup with Baylor, especially coming off of a long loss, you know, that um, losses can sting, but they, they hurt even more if you, if you don't learn from them. And so we're going to learn as much as we can and try to be a better better team uh, when we when we come up to Texas this weekend. And I'm really looking forward to the matchup and, and the fact that it's going to be a tough team uh, really test us. I think we can find out a lot about ourselves in this game. On that turnover front, Coach, I was reading an article and you had mentioned that that was something you guys needed to clean up coming off of the, the loss to Boise State. Does that make it, you know, I mean, that's always a goal anyways, but especially when you're watching this Baylor team that seems to collect turnovers uh, by the pairs at least weekly. Of course, and then that's this. I mean, the, the, when you when you have a defense that is uh, coached by Dave Miranda and his staff, they're going to be aggressive. They're going to find ways to make plays, and that usually means turnovers. And so we, we need to be mindful of what we're doing. But at the same time, I don't want us to be complacent in our game plan. I want us to be aggressive and utilize our talent on our team. And um, you know, turnovers are part of the game sometimes. But uh, it's just it's just uh, for us, it's it's kind of an uh, out of the ordinary deal when we turn the ball over that many times, especially back to back like how we did it with fumbles and ball security so that's something that's not really uh you know that's out of character for our program and our team we're definitely going to get back on it and make sure that our guys learn from it but i want to make sure that we stay aggressive and that we play our style of football the last thing i want to do is go in there um being afraid to make a mistake rather than being excited to make a play you mentioned lavelle edwards you played for him you don't see many lavelle edwards anytime uh, there's not a lot of guys that hung around or are no longer staying at one program for a long time like Bobby Bowden, Tom Osborne and others. How rare was he and and what was that like to play for him? Amazing, and, and for a, a man to help mentor me, and I'm, I'm very thankful that I, I got to be the head coach here at BYU. Um, my first year was the last year of his life, and I, I was able to spend some time with him uh, weekly and get tons of uh, advice and, and uh, mentoring from him. He's been that, there for me, and he, he and his family. I have a great relationship with his family. This is what Lavelle was all about. Was it's not just about football. It's, a, it's actually about caring about me as a person, and I felt that. I think we spent less time 
I'm talking about football more about my role as a as a human being and as a as a person and, and a contributor to community. And I thank him so much for it. And hopefully we can honor him in the way that we play this game. He's the father of BYU football, and so uh, he's done some great things and, and changed so many lives. And I think um, it'd be great for us to, to you know respect the game, but respect our opponents and play the the, the style that he loved. We, we play with sportsmanship and class and try to do as best as we can. It's hard to do in, in a physical competitive game like football, but we try to do it because that's what Lavelle taught me when I was a player, and I, and I really enjoyed it. And so I'm hoping to give these guys on our team the same type of experiences that, that Lavelle provided for me as a player. Now, Coach, I know that you were a fullback when you played. That position is almost an endangered species now. <laughs> I'm very pro bringing the fullback back. Baylor scored a fullback touchdown this year. I might have, you know, just seeing one, just shed a little bitty tear. I know you have fullback on your roster. Uh, can, can, we, can we start a movement? Let's bring the fullback back. All you have to do is be patient. Football is a is a is a it recycles itself around, mm-hmm. and um, sooner or later, these teams that have success that do have a fullback on the roster will realize that that's the X factor. But we don't want everyone to know about it. You know? Okay. But I, I I also want everyone to know that fullbacks can be great coaches too. I'm hoping yeah. to get to, to get to that to that level someday. But fullbacks can coach football. You, it, it's it's just like old linemen can. It, it's those guys that never really had a, a star role. You know, I played. 50 games at BYU and I scored one touchdown. That's the life of a fullback and I'm honored and say that that was the best touchdown in BYU history. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when Emmett Smith was inducted to the Hall of Fame, he mentioned Daryl Johnston. He, it's kind of like that position is attached to the great running backs as well. If you don't mind, just a couple of more questions. Again, Kalani Sataki, head coach at Brigham Young, Baylor Brigham Young, Saturday at, uh, at McLean Stadium. Coach Aranda said when he was at Wisconsin, he was coaching against Brigham Young and Gary Anderson walked up to him and his, the greatest compliment he heard about an opponent was Gary told him Dave don't screw this up and what he meant is Wisconsin had kind of an edge I think they were leading the game because Gary knew how tough Brigham Young football players and team is it's almost like you have to cut the head off the snake to eventually beat them what does that say about your program I think it says a lot about the, the brand that BYU brings. Is it's guys that are going to play really hard, regardless of what the scoreboard says. And uh, I mean, these guys will appreciate the game so much and respect it so much that that uh, you know it, it's been that way for years. And that's something that Lavelle Edwards started when he was here, and it's gone all the way through with with Gary Croton as a head coach, Bronco Mendenhall, and now myself. It's it's something that I think this is is expected. That's the standard for our guys to play really hard, tough physical football. And, and uh, with with high effort, and so that's the that's the key. And we, I think, when you do that, you can you can live with the with the uh, results afterwards. But respecting the game means that you live every second of it, and you appreciate every second of it. These guys battle for so many days out in the year for only twelve guaranteed opportunities, and all that is is just minutes in the game if you're lucky. And so, why waste a second? And we're hoping to to have great memories with this with the sixty minutes that we're going to have in in Waco, and and really honor our opponents as we do it. We're excited to share the field with Baylor and to be in front of their fans and to have a lot of, a lot of fun doing it and whatever happens if we if we're able to play our brand of football regardless of what what happens in the game we'll be happy with the way with the way it ends well coach you know one of the most legendary games in the history of uh, of Baylor was against BYU and Steve Young it was mm-hmm. back and forth and back and forth coach Taff has told us the story many times that Steve Young ran to him and grabbed him after the game saying what a great game so uh, looking forward to hoping getting one of those again well, I mean, I, I'm sure the defensive coaches don't want to hear it. You know, you have two, you, you have two head coaches that are defensive coordinators that are gonna like, oh, that's like the worst thing you want to hear. But, um, but you know, as, as long as the guys are battling and and and, and uh, enjoying the game, respecting it, I think we would we'll deal with whatever happens. I I think we we want to we want to give it our best shot. I know Bader wants to as well, and and then uh, you know whatever happens after the game, we'll shake hands and be friends as always. One last question: uh, You did recruit Apu, right? The Siaki out of. Uh, the Utah. He's now from LSU and now at Baylor. What do you remember about his recruitment? We were his first offer. I know his family really well. Really close with with a lot of his family, extended family. Great young man. So physical. We were his first offer um, way back when. when I, he was a young kid. I think it was back in 2016 or 17. But um, we saw something special in him. He's got this 
great charisma about him. Mm-hmm. He's just a fun loving person, you know, and, and uh, he's, he's great to have on a team. And, and I think that he's got this great connection with Dave Aranda and he loves being out there and I'm looking forward to giving him a big hug, man. I, I love watching him play and such a great, I think he's doing his family proud by, by enjoying every second. I just mentioned the guys having fun with every second that they're out on the field. This guy has fun in everything that he does and, and uh, it's been, it's been an honor to know him and his family and looking forward to seeing him on Saturday. Well, let me tell you what's been an honor. First of all, thank you for being a part of the show. But when all hell broke loose back at the end of July with the SEC, Oklahoma, and Texas, our audience exploded and Brigham Young fans flocked to listen to us, watch us, and we listened to them as well. It has been a fun ride since that time, and I know they're thrilled to have you on our lineup today as well. Uh, Kalani, thank you so much. Good luck. I know it's a tough week because of all the emotions, but it also sounds like it's going to be a fun week. Thank you so much for your time, and good luck going forward. Appreciate the time, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. Yes, sir. That's Brigham Young head football coach Kalani Sataki. You, you can. The, the, he got. He has the personality and, and uh, an amazing at what he's done. I know they're coming off a tough loss to Boise State. And speaking of that, speaking of Boise State, Jeremiah Dickey will join us at some point later in the week. Ty Detmer, former grade at Brigham Young, will join us as well. This is Sikkim 365 Radio. IdealMRI.com. They can help find out whatever is so painful in your shoulder, your knee, your back, wherever it is. Masters of Barbecue, kings of crazy good food, and the perfect sanctuary for sports, beer, and barbecue. It's Coach's Triple X Smoke on Austin Avenue in downtown Waco and also on Highway 84 in McGregor. A menu filled with choices like a great offensive playbook, including three meat combos with sides, burgers, and sandwiches, wings, loaded giant spuds, and salads. Crazy wings, chicken poppers, big boy fries, and smoking quesadillas, just some of their amazing appetizers. There's Coach Big Old Draft Beer or Orders Zach's Spicy Bloody Mary or Coach's Margaritas and Mimosas while watching your favorite team play. Great pecan smoked barbecue, fun atmosphere with attention to detail, including a catering menu and we'll quote your price to fit your budget. Coach's Triple X Smoke on Austin Avenue in downtown Waco and walking distance to the great places to shop and enjoy and also the original location on Highway 84 in McGregor. Great food, great price, great fun. Eat where the locals eat. Three Nations Brewing Company has 16 different beers on draft with a new beer every Friday. It also offers two air-conditioned tap rooms, a large indoor beer hall, a second-floor mezzanine offering a great overview of the brewing company and equipment and patio where you can relax under the shade. Plus, you can now experience the new Three Nations Beer Garden Grill on our shaded patio with socially distanced seating for your enjoyment. Grab a cold beer and enjoy a bite from our freshly prepared and delicious menu. Street tacos, quesadillas, freshly cooked burgers and dogs and veggie burgers too. State Fair tornado fries, nachos, and so much more all prepared and cooked on site. So come visit the award-winning Three Nations Brewing Company on East Vandergrip off I-35 in Carrollton. You want to know why Stonewood Dental is so successful? Listen to what happy customers have to say. Pleasant. It's different than any other dentist's office. I really feel like they care. And it's not that you're here for two hours waiting on someone to take care of you. It's quick and easy, and you know, I bring my kids, and my kids love being here too. They really love the treasure box. <laughs> Staff is really nice and accommodating, real friendly. You feel more like home. It's not sterile looking. Everybody has their own personalized rooms with decorations and decor, and they'll even have a blanket for you when it's cold. (laughs) I've recommended people to actually come here, and they are patients now. I really love it here. It feels like family. Learn more. Stonewood-Dental.com.
In the market for a quality metal building? Since 1943, Pioneer Steel and Pipe has helped Central Texas residential and commercial customers with metal building design, panel options, building components, and trim options. Pioneer Steel and Pipe's residential line is energy efficient, offers low maintenance, reduces insurance payments, is impact resistant, and carries up to a 45-year limited warranty. In addition, they can also help you find a metal building contractor for your project. Pioneer Steel and Pipe with locations in Waco and Bryan and at PioneersBoys.com. Shorty's Pizza Shack at 12th and Bagby is a homegrown, family-owned and operated must-visit pizza place in Waco. Fantastic pizza by the slice or get the whole pie to share. Great happy hour specials every single day. And it's not just pizza. Great wings. You have to try the Sikkim sauce, chili cheese fries, pizza pillows, and more. Dine in for a great hangout or carryout. Order online at shortyspizzashack.com or do yourself a favor and bring your crew to the restaurant at 12th and Bagby. Shorty's Pizza Shack. Tell them Paul sent you by. This is Sikkim 365 Radio. Text us at 254-339-1122. The Sikkim 365 Radio text line is sponsored by Riverbend Liquor and Wine with the most extensive variety of craft beer in Waco. A hidden gem on Lakeshore Drive and 19th Street. It's always a pleasure and honor. Uh, Hall of Fame coach Grant Taft, former Baylor head football coach, executive director, of course, for many years of the AFCA as well, with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. It's great to talk to you again. Uh, I, uh, I flash back, look back at the box score, 1983, Baylor, I think 40, Brigham Young 36, and I've heard all about the game. When I bring up Brigham Young and Baylor, what do you remember? Oh my gosh, uh, uh, action. <laughs> I think of action on the football field. I, I think of uh, uh, my very, very close friend, Lavelle Edwards. Uh, he and his wife, Patty, uh, were two of Donnell and my closest friends in the coaching world. And so I, I, I think of him. He, he was a way ahead of his time uh, in uh, throwing the football. He was, uh, he was a master at that. And uh, I learned a lot from him. And uh, we were very, very close friends. And uh, Patty, uh, you know, we still have communications with her. So you guys played in back-to-back years and, of course, non-conference schedules, and, and, and you were never uh, shied away from playing unbelievable teams, and you did that throughout your career. <laughs> uh, we played the who's who of the top ten, we like to say. <laughs> yeah, you did, and you won a lot, and you, you beat some of those teams and great memories. And uh, I remember the uh, stories, whether it's Michigan or Florida State or whoever it was, Nebraska, and, you know, you, you played – and Brigham Young, of course, during that time, they were rolling and oh yeah they you you the, the 83 84 for did you reach out to Lavelle was that one of those things where you guys said hey let's play each other how how, how simple or was it simple back in those days yeah it, it was pretty simple uh, we were uh, very very close friends with uh, Donnell and I with he and Patty uh, prior to that uh, we we were uh, both uh, Donnell and I and Patty and he were on the Nike uh, advisory board and so it was kind of a perk deal you know and we traveled all over the world and every summer we'd go for two or three weeks and uh, play golf uh, in the most uh, amazing places across the world and so we we became really really uh, close friends uh, with Patty and Donnell and and uh, of course coach and I 
Well, so you played in 83 and 84, and they won the national title in 84. They were building towards that, and we know the history of quarterbacks, whether Jim McMahon, Gifford Nielsen, uh, and, and many others along the way. Virgil Carter is an old-school name. Uh, we had Ty Detmer on Tuesday. He won the Heisman Trophy. They just had a kid drafted early by the Jets and Zach Wilson. But you happened to pick against Brigham Young, play against Brigham Young, when they had some guy named Steve Young at quarterback. Uh, and it, it was a shootout, wasn't it? Oh, my. It was. And uh, it was uh, it, it was such uh, uh, an amazing series because uh, Lavelle and I were such close friends, and we weren't in the same conference, but it was a shootout every year, you know. And uh, we, in the summer, we traveled together and we compared notes and talked about offense, you know, so it, it, we really didn't have any secrets from each other, but, but uh, it was uh, the Steve Youngs uh, uh, and our athletes that uh, made those games so great. So he went nuts in that game. He had a bunch of yards passing. He had a bunch of yards rushing. Um, you won the game 40 to 36. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes the story is not just the game. You have a story about after the game because he came, what, charging across the field? Yeah, again? yeah. We're, you know, when a game's over, well, you know, uh, normally uh, 99.9% .9 you meet the, the opposing coach uh, uh, whom you are uh, well know well or good friends with, as I did with LaBelle. And so the game's over, I mean, and it was a crescendo of a game. And so I'm going across the field to meet LaBelle, and I see out of the corner of my eye, I see this movement. And I look, and it's Steve Young, and he is running as hard as he can directly to me. So, you know, I'm an old linebacker, so I just turned and kind of squared my feet up. I thought he was fixing to try to level me, and I was going to try to level him, you know. And he came running up to me and planted his feet. And he said, Coach Taft, wasn't that the greatest game you've ever been involved in? And I said, Steve, it was. But that's the kind of uh, young man he was. He, I know his heart was torn out because he had played a, such a great game. And we beat them. And uh, and the first thing he did was he beeline to me to congratulate us for the victory. But that's kind of kind of person he was, you know, a great player. 350. 51 yards passing, one touchdown, <laughs> ran for 113 and scored twice. You did get to him, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you sacked him three times, tried to contain him. Was was he one of those that you want to put pressure on him, but you have to be careful if you do, because if he gets loose, he can hurt you as much getting out of the pocket? Well, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a great analysis of him. Uh, and, and folks like him, they just – they they individually just put so much pressure on your defense and uh and he was so highly respected by his teammates that they just played so hard for him as well as for uh, Lavelle and, and BYU itself. And you had that rotation between Tom Mickey, Cody Carlson. You had 317 yards or some there, nearly 300 yards rushing led by Alfred Anderson, who scored the game winning touchdown. Wow. Yeah, that that was it was an unbelievable game, uh, Smoke. I I hadn't thought much about it uh, in a long time, but uh, the memories are flowing back, and and just the the greatness of the game meant so much to me and Lavelle. Is that you know it wasn't some sloppy affair, it wasn't a push and pull, it was a football game at its best, and uh, we. Were wouldn't have expected anything less for either one of us. Well, you got him that game, but the next year was the year they won the national title. Um, yeah. I think Robbie Bosco might have been their quarterback, and they they got you pretty good, I, I guess, up in uh, Provo. you remember much how good that team was? Well, they were pretty good. They they put a whipping on us, and we had uh, we were sort of starting over again, so to speak. You know, we had a really great team and graduated a lot of a lot of folks, and uh, so we were kind of starting over again. And they they were sort of retained, and 
they were they were darn good that year. They were really good, I would say. You have, in all your time of you know, how long you were in college football, Grant Taft, the Hall of Fame coach with us on Sikkim 365 Radio, you've seen it all. And, of course, the landscape in college football continues to change, even most recently in late July with Texas and Oklahoma and their eventual move to the SEC. How important and how critical do you think the Big 12 will look bad? I mean, it looked like it could fall apart yet again. The that they were able to grab somebody like Brigham Young, who's a, a powerful independent program. Oh my, yeah. Well, it's a it's a huge step and a huge uh, thing, not only for uh, our program over here, our our schools, but it's a great thing for BYU because it's going to give them the national exposure that it's sometimes hard to get uh, where they play over there, you know, mm-hmm. from the east to the, the national exposure. So they're going to be right in the thick of uh, some of the best football uh, in America. All right, one more question, if you don't mind. Uh, Dave Aranda, hey. last year, 2-7. and seven. Uh, You know, Baylor seems like the football program always finds a way of resiliency no matter what they face. And now, yeah, they've got work to do. Uh, but five and one, what have you seen uh, what he's done this year? Well, it's not a surprise to me because uh, I uh, watched him last year and while they were uh, suffering defeats, but yet uh, building building a program that could succeed on this level. And uh, I, I just am very impressed with him. Uh, he's got an excellent coaching staff, and uh, they're going to they're going to surprise some people, and some people probably won't be surprised by what they're going to do this year, but I think they're going to be very, very good. How you been? You enjoy going and watching those games from your from your suite with the family and is this kind of enjoying Baylor? Oh my, yes. And uh, getting to see, uh, you know, the teams that Baylor play, uh, it's a uh, it's a great time of life for us and for our family, and so we just uh, pull for Baylor and hope that uh, they can have a, a great year this year because we really, really uh, like the coaches out there. You know what? I have to bring this up because Lane told me this. You finally learned how to listen to us, didn't you, on the app? Oh, Yeah. You rascal! <laughs> you, you, you got us, and, and you were the first person I called uh, back in March of 2020 when things changed. And I'll never forget. You kind of gave me one of those uh, pep talks and said we're going to make it. And you were huge in helping us get to where we were, and, and obviously where we are today. We appreciate you always, Coach. Well, I tell you what, it's it's been a pleasure to have you as a friend and to see what you do for sports uh, here in Central Texas and even nationwide. So we love you and appreciate you, Smoke. Thank you, Coach. That's the Hall of Famer, Grant Taft, Sikkim 365 Radio. We will hear from Max Olson. He and Mitch Sherman wrote a part of the series TheAthletic.com is doing. companies and policies out there it gets so confusing shopping for insurance and i never know if i'm getting the policy that's right for me luckily i met the team at the niche group insurance agency with the niche group you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs with the niche group i know i'm getting the right coverage at the right price if you need insurance talk to the experts at the niche group at 1-800-258-8302 There are 26 letters in the alphabet, over 600,000 words in the dictionary, and just three of them said together can change everything. Let's order pizza. Those three words lead to dough made from scratch and three fresh signature cheeses that blanket golden crust in a heavenly melt on Marco's Pizza that'll blow your mind. So visit Marco's.com to order and stop by Marco's Pizza in Bellmead, China Spring, Woodway, and soon to open in Robinson. Marco's Pizza. The lovers get it.
Taylor, Scott & White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. The team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike, whether it's knee or shoulder pain, hand or wrist injuries, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trusts. Baylor Scott & White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, wants to get you back in the game. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas, and our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less. Sometimes thousands of dollars less, whether you're using insurance or not. At Ideal MRI, we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs. Even offering financing if that's needed, everything included in the price, and you'll not get something as a surprise in the mail later on. If you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. They'll know. You can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or give us a call, 833-IDEAL-MRI, Ideal MRI. MRI.com. Born in Waco, Brotherwell Brewing exists to serve the Central Texas community with locally crafted beer of the highest quality. They want to bring Central Texas closer to the brewing experience so everyone can enjoy well-made beer as much as they do. For two and a half years, they've been bringing high-quality beer to Central Texas at their location on Bridge Street in East Waco. Brotherwell Brewing believes in community and bringing people together to enjoy products made in their community. So for your game day, whether it's a tailgate or at home, stop by Brotherwell Brewing for high-quality craft beer made right here in central texas 400 east bridge street and check them out online at brotherwell.com for a limited time refinance your vehicle and have 90 days with zero payments only at genco fcu refinancing lowers your rate and you pay less for your car you can't pass on rates as low as 1.75 percent for 48 months apply online today annual percentage rate subject to change without notice subject to credit approval membership eligibility and loan policies go to GencoFCU.org. ncua equal housing lender my money my Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Search 365 Sports on YouTube. We are back. Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. We'll update you on some scores in college football. Texas at Oklahoma State, 24-13. Oklahoma State was driving. That game is in the third quarter. Florida and LSU uh, back and forth. And same thing with Auburn and Arkansas. Auburn has just scored, and we'll update those scores in just a moment uh, here on Sikkim 365 Radio 365 Sports. In fact, let's do that right now. As far as college football, top 25. And, and Paul, you asked this question earlier. A&M leads Missouri 28-14 late third quarter. Are there any good games going on tonight? I mean, there's some good ones today early and tonight. It seems like this was stacked for the daytime. It's fine with me, you know, but, uh, you know, Kentucky and Georgia is the, you know, the game of the day and it's, it's at two 30. So yeah, there's a couple good at night after we talked about it, but, uh, you know, really for the most part, the, the best ones are, are during the day. I mean, Ole Miss and Tennessee, Tennessee's four and two, Ole Miss is four and one, but I, I don't think that's really going to be that much of a game. Oklahoma, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma state has now had to settle for a field goal 24, 16, as they are just under five minutes left in the third quarter with Tanner Brown kicking a 21 yard field goal right there on the doorstep. The difference in that game, other than the pick six for Oklahoma state, Craig, that allowed Oklahoma state to hang around. Texas is scoring touchdowns in the red zone and Oklahoma state seems to be settling for field goals. Yeah, and I think it's a game where, you know, if you look back at two weeks ago in Stillwater, uh, a lot of people were wringing their hands after Baylor's loss there, and uh, I think their their feelings are being reinforced today. I, I think Oklahoma State's a very beatable team, and uh, Texas was a good matchup for them as far as what they can do offensively, and they're doing just enough defensively. I mean, Oklahoma State, uh, they – have good players but like their offense doesn't strike fear in you in any way 
And when you constantly have to say, well, is the quarterback the good version or the best? You know, like, sp- spare me. Spare me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, this game's going – pretty much how I thought it would go with Texas in control of it. I felt good about their chances. Now, look, they're only up by eight, and, you know, Casey Thompson has thrown a pick six, so this is one throw away from being a, you know, a tie game potentially. But, I mean, Texas has, has pretty much controlled this game so far, and, you know, they've, they've done um, well defensively, and, uh, you know, this would be a big win. But a long way to go, obviously, a quarter and, and change – uh, still remaining, but uh, yeah, they they look like the better team. Bijan Robinson over a hundred yards again, hundred and twenty four yards, seventeen carries, two well, scores, and also caught a touchdown pass. Yeah, and I don't think I quite rounded up my thought on the Baylor thing as far as losing there two weeks ago. They played terribly, they played absolutely awful, and they still had a chance to win that game. Yep. And this is the type of game when you're watching Oklahoma State and you go, "Yep, they really screwed that screwed that up that opportunity uh, two weeks ago." Not that. You know, even if they had played better, they would necessarily beat Oklahoma State. But I think you're seeing today, you're like, had they just played a little bit better. On they, offense especially. Uh, on offense, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, then they could have probably won that game. But, uh, you know, the Cowboys shut them, uh, shut them down for the most part. And uh, not so much today against Texas. I, uh, I have a, I a worry about Oklahoma State is that once somebody, ex- like, truly exposes, exposes them. That's what I was saying leading I mean, into yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, all they, you got to do they is. They might go on a losing streak. Yeah. Yeah. The, because Texas has the receivers, so mm. they, they throw it on them. That's what Baylor didn't do. Baylor couldn't throw the football because Gary wasn't that good, and neither were the receivers, and neither was the blocking. And Texas is getting all those things today. So, yeah, they're able to throw the ball, and then you have B. John Robinson, you know, ready to, to follow up. I mean, that's the that's the way to do it. And Baylor just had no passing game. Uh, so they yep. therefore had no running game. Therefore, they had no offense for the most part. And that's why they, they took the L in Stillwater. But, yeah, still, still a tight game. But it feels like Texas is up two scores when they're really only up eight. Yeah, eight points, and they're just getting ready to punt again. LSU in Florida. LSU has a pick six on Emory Jones. Third, two of them, 35-28. Florida just scored. Still midway through the third quarter. I think Dan Mullen might have been out thinking himself with playing Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson's led him to back-to-back touchdown drives. I think that uh, Emory Jones is an absolute adventure. I mean, he's kind of Florida's Spencer Sanders. And uh, Anthony Richardson comes in and they, they make plays. I, I, I don't – I mean it, – Well, this feels like a game LSU's going to – Get a blow. There's a lot yeah, of time left. There's like There's a, seven and change left in the third quarter, and now it's only, what, a yeah. one-score game? Yeah, so. the benefit for LSU so far is that Florida hasn't stopped them for anything. Yeah, and I do want to make one mention. Uh, Baylor Romney is warming up, uh, at least in the early – all right, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Baylor Romney is warming up, so he's going through the pregame stuff, and, you know, therefore I would think he's probably going to be available today, so that's notable because I was just saying earlier, Jaron Hall will be the guy for BYU, but – you could have Baylor Romney, um, you know, show, you know, appear or potentially play. So they do have their quarterbacks, and uh, that's that's notable for BYU. Now, do you want to tell everybody why your head was dipping there? A no, ago? It's, uh, it, I have to because it allows me to vent. But I wish I could say what I really feel. So Nebraska's down in the one yard line at Minnesota, down five, stopped on four consecutive plays, uh, and then they get the ball back, drive down third and twelve at about the eighteen yard line. They run a fullback like trap for five yards, and then they miss a, a short chip chop field goal. A kicker who had kicked the 51-yarder, they trail Minnesota 21-16. And here's what I'll predict. The Gophers now, Golden Gophers, will drive down the field 80 yards, nine plays, take up six minutes, and take the lead by more than two scores, or by more than one score. I feel better now. It's just a disaster. It just can't get no worse, but it, it absolutely does. Also, uh, Auburn. That 28-17 is trying to separate from Arkansas, but Arkansas is already back inside Auburn territory at the 29-yard line. Michigan State has taken the lead and then scored again. That was 16, now 17-9 over Indiana with two minutes left in the third quarter. Since he leads UCF 42-7. to Yeah, I don't know what's going on with UCF. I know, you know, obviously injuries have played a, a factor there, but uh, that's – that's uh, still surprising, just some of the scores we've seen from them. It's been, like I said earlier, a little bit up and down for Gus Malzahn, but they have, you know, dealt with some health issues. So, uh, good, good, uh, nice little blowout there for Cincinnati, and they just keep on rolling and rolling. And, you know, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see as the deeper we get, you know, the more that things start to kind of tighten up and the more that that magnifying glass starts to hone in on Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, you know, what what that ends up looking like. But uh, so far, so good today and throughout the uh, season. All right. From Jordan Nuren, uh, he's a BYU fan. 
Uh, he set us up a few times with some information about, you know, fan base and whatever. And, and listen to you guys uh, uh, again with the interview with Kaladi. I'm grateful you were able to connect with everyone. He's also going to be working at a hospital. Do you feel like the game will be streamed? If you get ESPN.com, right? If you yeah, get the game on ESPN, plus, yeah. then you can uh, you can do that and watch the game on occasion whenever yeah. you possibly can. My advice is if you have the scratch to do it, just go ahead and get that ESPN, Hulu, Disney bundle. Like, depending on what your situation is, it's cheaper. Like, if you're somebody who watches something that might be on Hulu, like, I don't know, Sons of Anarchy, like the old FX episodes, or, you know, Disney, whatever, whether it be Marvel or their mm -hmm. cartoons. I mean, the, the bundle's better than just doing yeah. the, the ESPN Plus, my opinion. We do it, Dave Aranda coming up yep. next. All right, uh, from Ryan Pryor, you would think the coaching advantage would favor Baylor because not only does Grimes know the scheme, but also the players at Brigham Young, and yet they know him, the coaching yeah. staff at Brigham Young. Yeah, I, I think, again, that's going to be the biggest matchup in this game. You know, the players, obviously, it comes down to them, but we've seen, you know, two weeks ago in Oklahoma State, coaching was a factor there, too. I mean, that was an all-around bad effort from Baylor, um, and, and even the coaches, you know, took it fell on the sword a bit and then obviously showed a lot better uh, last week. But, yeah, I think that that chess match, I mean, Sataki has to know that, that Grimes and company kind of know what his deal is, and, you know, on the other side, Jeff Grimes and – Eric Mateos, they know that Sitaki and company know what they're doing. So, yeah, it's it's going to be fascinating to see how they kind of play off of each other. When we come back, Baylor head coach Dave Aranda on Brigham Young and a good friend of his, Kalani Sitaki, on the other sideline in the matchup itself on Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Nitchie Group Insurance Agency. With the Nitchie Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Nitchie Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Nitchie Group at 1-800-258-8302. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, over 600,000 words in the dictionary, and just three of them said together can change everything. Let's order pizza. Those three words lead to dough made from scratch and three fresh signature cheeses that blanket golden crust in a heavenly melt on Marco's Pizza that'll blow your mind. So visit Marco's.com to order and stop by Marco's Pizza in Bellmead, China Spring, Woodway, and soon to open in Robinson. Marco's Pizza the lovers get it. Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike, whether it's knee or shoulder pain, hand or wrist injuries, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trusts. Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, wants to get you back in the game. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas, and our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less. Sometimes thousands of dollars less, whether you're using insurance or not. At Ideal MRI, we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs. Even offering financing if that's needed, everything included in the price, and you'll not get something as a surprise in the mail later on. If you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. They'll know. You can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or give us a call, 833-IDEAL-MRI, Ideal MRI. MRI.com. Born in Waco, Brotherwell Brewing exists to serve the Central Texas community with locally crafted beer of the highest quality. They want to bring Central Texas closer to the brewing experience so everyone can enjoy well-made beer as much as they do. For two and a half years, they've been bringing high-quality beer to Central Texas at their location on Bridge Street in East Waco. Brotherwell Brewing believes in community and bringing people together to enjoy products made in their community. So for your game day, whether it's a tailgate or at home, stop by Brotherwell Brewing for high-quality 
craft beer made right here in Central Texas, 400 East Bridge Street, and check them out online at brotherwell.com. For a limited time, refinance your vehicle and have 90 days with zero payments. Only at Genco FCU. Refinancing lowers your rate and you pay less for your car. You can't pass on rates as low as 1.75% for 48 months. Apply online today. Annual percentage rate subject to change without notice. Subject to credit approval, membership eligibility, and loan policies. Go to GencoFCU.org. NCUA equal housing lender. My money, my future, my credit union. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Search 365 Sports on YouTube. Baylor football coach Dave Aranda with me. David Smoke, Sikkim 365 Radio. I saw Pete Thamel wrote a little summary about the high school football season. And you mentioned to him, which I thought sounded just like you, that last year it was like you were a stepdad Mm -hmm. to these kids. They had Matt, they had Coach Rule, and you didn't get to see them. Mm -hmm. That was a really unique and I thought made a heck of a lot of sense analogy. No, I appreciate that. I think just the part of the way I communicate and – the, and this has become clearer to me as we've gone, but it's been more of one-on-ones, more of in-face, more of uh, face-to-face uh, talks, more of you know personal um, conversations, um, and it's been um, all things that are just hard to do when you're not able to do those things. And so I think. You know, that combined with just the very different style of what was before, I think for no fault of anybody, it, it just looked like, you know, who is this guy and what is he doing, you know? And so I just think like trying to maneuver through that, through the losses, it was difficult. And the Gary Bohannon quote, I'm going to read it if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. I think of a guy who had a chance to leave and didn't, fought for a job at a school he loves. Mm-hmm. He fought so hard in the dark for a chance to be in the light. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because there were times when there were thoughts about whether he was going to come back or was he going to leave. And there was a couple of times when he had some things to deal with as well. Yeah, I think, I think one of the things that has become really clear to me was that I think it's hard to coach a team when you can't really push a team when if you push a team and you're afraid of people leaving you can't really coach them and I just think for me last year just not knowing the team like I wanted to know them and really to be honest more of them knowing me probably mm-hmm. more so um, and trusting me uh, I think a lot of it was who is this guy what is he doing I think to you, it 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 hampers being able to push a team the way that you like. And I think, you know, that stuff's happening now, but the connections and the and the, the relationships are so much stronger. Has, have a, has a player or a players come to you and said, I get you now? Not so much that, but, I mean, you get that kind of interaction now? Yeah. Now that you have a hands-on type of deal? Yeah, they'll say it through. They get, like, sense of humor or they'll get um, – kind of a look or they'll get you know after wins he's still the same or you know they'll get they'll say all of that so I think that's their way of saying that Apu we've talked about him you and I two or three different times and then to have the game you mentioned him specifically in the post game Mm -hmm. coaching is about leadership it's about raising young men in a way whether they have something at home or not and he does but Mm -hmm. how proud are you of him and how do you still have to keep your thumb right on his forehead yeah, I think there's things where I think just, um, you know, very um, emotional. His heart is huge. And so um, a lot of um, um, a lot of feelings um, and a lot of, uh, of um, passion. And so I think to try to, to not um, dim any of that. And to not make Apu say, you know, more dull or more 
or like me or like anyone else, but to make to try to focus those things that he has to the goals that he wants. Yeah, I think is really the is really the uh, the issue, and to get Apu to be the best version of him. And I think, you know, to Apu's credit, you know, you have to want that. You have to um, you have to you know first of all see and accept, and then then um, challenge and do. And I think he's we're in that process right now. How difficult is it to juggle every single player? And who they are psychologically, backgrounds, personalities, what makes them click or not? Very tiring. Yeah, I think very tiring. I think you know, I don't, I don't. Um, we were talking about the other day, just football wise. You know, this it's it's great being able to be in this game because there's a lot of um, of um, of uh, commonality offensively for sure, and then defensively, I know. Um, I know Clonny and their system, and so I'm, I, I'm probably have a um, bit of a cheat code in terms of watching tape and could go to different games that should highlight different things. And I think the work that's needed to look at all the tape and things were, as you know, my previous my previous um, experience was just all that. Um, and so now, just dealing with just people and, and um, dealing with culture and team. You know, I think it's it takes a lot of time. I don't see how you could really do football all the way and do what we're doing here. I, th- I don't think it, will, it would work. I don't know if you guys were ever on the same staff, Sataki and you, but I know he coached with Gary Anderson at Oregon State, at Utah. So how much do you know him? A lot, yeah. So I, um, when I was at Hawaii, knew of him. Um, when I was at Utah State, you know, he would always be around. He'd be, we'd be at Gary's house watching games uh, or having a barbecue with families, and he would always be there. And um, Wisconsin, same way, he'd visit every every spring and summer. Just one of the genuinely nicest guys you'd ever meet. He'd give you his shirt off his back, and it's just you know when it all came to December and and hiring season and all that, you know he was exactly how I thought he would be. He was uncomfortable there because, I, I, you know, here's a guy that has been battling, has success. You want to see him continue to have success, and here you are taking people that were, you know, right at the heart of that success, and so you feel that. But, I mean, he was great. He's got a great heart. So I have a lot of respect for him. It's, you know, it's, I think it's, it's, it's cool when you're in coaching and there's people that, you uh, good people have a success it's kind of that's the coaching profession it's it's you hear about that when it came to realignment and expansion the word poaching it's not really that is it you're just trying to have your best staff Mm -hmm. and he's obviously will go get somebody else from somebody else's staff it's like a domino effect yeah i think one of the things that's different is just um and i think i might have mentioned this to brian since i know like you know at the at the end of the year like um for me previously, previous to this past year, is December was always something, you know, bowl season generally, obviously not for us this last year. And then um, there's some family time there. So there's Christmas, there's hanging out with your kids, there's, um, you, know, um, you know, there's a bit of a break there before you get back in recruiting. And, you know, December this year was all just staffing. Mm-hmm. People are getting talked to by other people. You know, We've got to get raises for these people. We've got to try to help keep these people. And it was was the complete opposite of just relaxing and kind of chilling out. And so I think from that stage of it, it is like a full-on season. And so then when you are in that season, you want to be able to help you. But then I think for people that you really respect and and you want to see do well, you, you don't want to really hurt them. How much and how important was it you got to hire people that did what you needed them to do or what they've done to bring them on board rather than kind of just hiring someone because of what their past was like? Yeah, I think, you know, um, that was we talked about that some in the article, too. I think, you know, having made some hires, um, not assistant coach hires in any of the jobs, but quality controls and GAs and, and things like that, um, those hires at, the, at those stops were completely on what people did, and um, 
you know, when it's that way, it's really kind of pretty easy when you're hiring people for who they are and how they treat other people and um, how they handle stress and anxiety and how they, you know, how their ego takes success and how they take coaching and, um, and um, you know, how they take the pressure cooker of just what we're doing. That's completely different. That's like a whole, that's way harder. And so I think that has been a, a revelation, really. And I think it's, uh, you know, I think we've, you know, with, with Eric and Jeff and Chansey, I think in this, and then, um, you know, KC, I think in this cycle, it's been, it's been good. You mentioned no bowl game last year. Have you even thought about what a win this weekend would mean? No. I think, it's six wins. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I really see, I mean, um, so there's a story of, uh, so um, at Hawaii, Hawaii-BYU is big rivalry. So losing to BYU at the end of the year, um, we got fired right, right after that game. And then um, going to Utah State, being with Gary, I think we lost to BYU at Provo. It was like 6-3 to three or 9-6 nine to, nine to six or something like that. And then went to Wisconsin, and now we're playing BYU again. And this was um, the, gosh, I'm forgetting his name, the uh, Taysom, Taysom Hill. And so we're playing him, and we're up, we're winning. You know, it's in the third quarter. And Gary Anderson is generally a very cool customer, never really showed any emotion. And, and I think it was Gary. It might have been Bill Bush, but I, I think it was Gary. He came up to me, and, and he goes, he grabbed me by the elbow, and he goes, he goes, Dave, don't screw this up. He kind of looked at me, he grabbed my hand, and he hadn't really ever done anything like that. But it was just, there, there, is a, there is a culture there of just being in Utah of like, if there's any light, if there's any potential for BYU to win, they're going to find a way to win. They are going to do whatever it takes to win. So you have to completely shut the door on these folks. And it's like, there, is, you know, there wasn't a bunch of times that the Utah contingent that we had at Wisconsin at that time had beaten BYU. And so there was a, a strong, you know, Dave, don't screw this up, you know, this whole thing. And so I've since, since then played them at LSU too. And so I think, I told that story this morning to the staff because it's, it's, you can see stuff on tape, but this is, it's a gritty, very mature couple of these guys have been on missions. Mm-hmm. They're older, they're older, um, and um, they're tough, they're bullies. Right, they're uh, gym rats. They find ways to win, so it's going to be a challenge for us. That's the mentality you want of your team, right? You have to cut the head off the snake. That's right. That's right. What did it say the way they did bounce back for you last week and your staff, the team, and also the staff, and how they bounced back from Oklahoma State? It's a real strong care factor. I think um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, quiet and a lot of. Uh, um, Contemplation, a lot of uh, you know, angst and just uh, frustration. You know, I felt that on the plane, and then we get on Sunday, and I thought, you know, for for us to try to have high standards with our players and to hold them accountable, and to um, and to uh, really try to drive home. Um, you know, win with character. I think that starts with the coaches, and I think if it, I think if it doesn't happen at the coaching staff level, you know, I think it's a, uh, it's a joke. You know, and so I think, um, you know, I'm proud of the staff of the way they responded and took ownership and accountability and and that. But really, we have to do that. Uh, our guys are way too savvy and too in the know and are too. Um, Observe it, not to, and so I think you know started there, and then just the 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 realization of that anyone can beat anybody, and anybody can lose to anybody where we're at, and we control that, and so I think those those two things really drove that game. One more thing on Isaac Power, I thought after that huge game he had against Iowa State, he mentioned something about psychologists that uh, cherish the. Uh, 
the the victories, no matter how big or small, is that something that you brought up, and is that something that you have guys that can bring that to the table, not just X's and O's, but all of that? Yeah, I think so. I think you know you want to have um, an abundance mentality as opposed to a scarcity to where there's not, you know. And I was brought up that way of like you know you can't ever really celebrate anything because there's not enough out there and I gotta scratch and claw to get to the the one win that's just out there for for that everyone's striving for. And so I think, you know, when you approach it like that, um, you um, you know, I think I think your guys starve, I feel. Like there's just not they there there is no uh, joy and there is no love um, on your team because everyone's exerting everything all the time and it, it, we just you get drained and you get worn out. I've been a part of that. But to really enjoy that process and that journey, I think it's easy to say. I think it's hard to do because a lot of us are not brought up that way. And I think you know, we have our psychologist speak to the team on every Wednesday and um, we talk about things that the uh, would be good to bring up that our guys are, are working through and I think I just think that the microscope um, that our guys are under I think that you know that intensity can can be a good thing if we use it to better ourselves and that would be an example of it this is going to be a hell of a game isn't it yeah I think it is I think there are they I, th- I think a lot of similarities I would say I think there are Receiver core is probably the best receiver core that, that BYU's had in a long time, and so I think you know their their big playability, much like ours has 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 been shown in spurts. There's probably more advanced, and so for us to deny the deep pass and then really make them have to run the ball is really going to be the tell. Dave, thank you. Thank you, Dave Aranda, Baylor football coach, Sikkim three sixty five radio. All right, we're back to wrap it up, get a couple of predictions. One note, Baylor on homecoming day against a ranked team. Three wins, 13 losses, and two ties. The last time they beat a ranked team on homecoming day was Arkansas, number 10, back in 1986, 29-14. So their homecoming record against ranked opponents has not been very good. Paul Catalina, your thoughts? Uh, I think uh, I think Baylor wins today. I think that they, uh, they're they kind of a deeper and more complete team, although it should be a really good game. These are two good teams, and uh, you know this is one of the better teams Baylor's played uh, this year and uh, should, should mark it out that way. Yeah, I, first of all, I want to say uh, welcome to all the BYU fans, and hopefully you're enjoying yourselves, and uh, will enjoy yourselves throughout the rest of the day, uh, and travel back safely obviously but I'm going Baylor I I just I love the way that they played last week I think that they'll be able to run the football a little bit and uh, I I, you know Gary Bohannon uh, has looked sharp throwing so I like you know what I've seen I definitely think it's going to be a challenging game for them it's not going to be you know runaway type and I wouldn't expect to run away either way Uh, but yeah Baylor in a close one Two notes locally. Grant Taft is going to receive the National Child ID Foundation with uh, the Attorney General presenting to that on the field. Uh, And also, he's going to eventually have some sort of honor at McMurray, his alma mater, at that stadium. And Margene Hooks of Waco High and BYU will be the one running on the field with the Brigham Young alumni flag in this game today. All right, Oklahoma State has uh, Texas now down up by two. Texas is up by two, but... Oklahoma State's about to get the ball back. All right, for Paul Catalina, for Craig Smoke, thanks to Armstrong Sims in and behind where we are in our studio in the mothership. It's Baylor and Brigham Young just after 2.30, a half an hour from now. And this is Sikkim 365 Radio. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.